call the meeting to order. It is 12.01 p.m. We can start by uh, introducing ourselves since it is a remote meeting. Jack McCullough, Mayor. Uh, Salah Fano, District Council. 2. Jack, you might want to call on people. Okay, that's right. <laughs> Sal, I got you. Donna? Uh, Donna Bate, District 1. Uh, Palin? Palin Cohn, District 2. Uh, Carrie? Carrie Brown, District 3. Uh, Lauren? Lauren Hurl, District 1. Okay. Um, first item on the agenda. Um, I, I'll not spend any time with the meeting logistics and remote instructions. I'll say the first item on the agenda is to approve the agenda. Is there anything that we need to add that's not on the agenda already. Okay. I'm happy to provide an update if people have it or answer any questions about flood related things. Um, we've been trying to get you as regular information as we have, but um, certainly I know it's not specifically on the agenda, but we're happy to do that if we can. Great. Mm -hmm. um, next we have general business and appearance. Donna was trying to get in. Oh, Donna? We added a discussion of the Vermont Guards. We've gotten a couple of emails on it. Sure. Thank you. Um, general business and appearances is an, is an opportunity for any member of the public to address the council on any item that is not on the agenda. Um, and we can go ahead and do that right now. Okay, we can move to item number five, approve emergency health order. Bill, so thanks, to... I mean, basically the two orders that uh, are on your agenda today are, you know, are formalities that we need for FEMA to give us the authority to do certain things and to show that we mean business and to retroactively authorize decisions we've made since last Sunday and going forward to sign certain contracts uh, and, if we want to have funds reimbursed to us, we need to have these resolutions in place and they need to be approved by the city council. Uh, Carrie. Yeah, so um, I, I could just use a little clarification on what these actually say. Um, so there's, there's the, there are two things, right? There's the declaration of state of emergency slash public health threat. And it's got a whole bunch of whereas's, but it doesn't have any kind of therefore or statement or anything, it's just all whereas is. And so I'm not totally sure what that what that is. Oh. And then the second one has a bunch of whereas is, and then it says, now therefore, city council acting as the board of health becomes a public health emergency. And then there's another whereas about immediate debris and trash, and it's it's not really a complete sentence, and I'm not really sure what it says. So, so if you could clarify. Uh, those, right. Well, great. maybe we'll have to send out some revised ones. Um, they should have been uploaded new ones this morning. Um, Mary says we uploaded new ones this morning. I don't know. Um, where would I find them? Because I just yeah, went where to would the, you find the them? agenda page. No? On the agenda page. Yeah. That's where I got this. That's where you got them. I wonder yeah. why they're not coming through like they're supposed to be. I don't know. So, I can tell you what they're intended to be, yeah. and um, you can decide what you want to do with about them, or we can just warn another meeting. The health order is basically so. So there's an issue with FEMA and with the debris removal. FEMA doesn't necessarily do um, commercial garbage removal, but they will do health and safety related debris removal. So we are declaring a health and safety hazard for having all the trash in the streets, the the debris. The flood related debris so the health officer issued an order but the health officer can only issue an order for, for up to 48 hours and then the board of health which is you all would approve that order and then that says that now this is a public health and safety emergency that needs response it's not just trash commercial trash pickup and then the second is supposed to be an order authorizing the city manager to um execute contracts, emergency contracts outside of the normal purchasing policy for a period of up to uh, the, the next meeting of August 23rd. Um, 
as per your approval. Because again, if we have signed contracts, we need to show that we had the authority to sign the contracts. Yeah, that's, so, that's item uh, item six on the agenda bill. But I think okay. Carrie's questions were about both of the- But on number five, okay. Number five, yeah. Yeah, um, okay. So I'm seeing that number five has two attachments. And now and one of them is the health officer's emergency health order. Right. That That's just for our information, I'm assuming. Yes. Right. We don't need to do anything. So then the second one is um, is the Board, Board of Health. Health. And that's the one where it's um, it's that last whereas section. It's just a little, it's very clunky. And there's no, um, and maybe that's fine. So so the, the gist of that one is that we're proclaiming a public health emergency slash state of emergency, right? Correct. Okay, great. And that the, tra the presence of the debris downtown is causing that. So I think this is the one that I emailed you about this morning, yeah. Bill. I think that what it that last thing that said after this the now, now therefore where it says whereas the board of health health proclaims i think it should probably say the board of health further proclaims that immediate debris and trash removal from the public right public and private rights of way is essential for the maintenance of public health and safety perfect and so the chair would entertain a motion to adopt that uh, resolution with the language that I uh, read out. I'll make a motion that we adopt the resolution as, adopt, as amended. Second. Is there any further discussion? Okay, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you. Opposed? Okay, we have adopted that resolution. Next, procurement authorization for city manager. Again, this is as as the manager described it, and chair would entertain a motion to adopt this emergency procurement authorization. I'll make a motion to give the city manager emergency authorization. And to, to be clear, I think it's it says in the um, document, but just to be clear, this is only for flood and recovery related efforts. It's not for everything else for the city. <laughs> uh, I'll second. And okay. I do have a question. They moved and seconded, uh, Lauren, your question. Yeah, just, just curious, Bill, like what kind of things do you anticipate needing to procure so, in the next few weeks? So, for example, we procured document um, document preservation. It's happening right now. Uh, and that is reimbursable, but that was $48,000. Normally anything over 10 would have to come to the contract. We, we thought we were gonna have to procure uh, the downtown garbage pickup, which could be close to half a million or a million dollars. Uh, the state instead is picking that up for municipality. They're handling that, but, but at the time we drafted this, that was one. Uh, so those kinds of things, you know, we've got folks in cleaning professionals cleaning out city hall and cleaning out the fire station and we you know we had to do it so those are the kinds of things that when we get audited we need to show that that those contracts were entered into under proper authority and technically according you know our purchasing policy something we should look at doesn't have an emergency exemption or or section so we we're just basically saying for these things the council's okaying you know, obviously we'll report them and those kinds of things, but um, so that it's clear that these were duly authorized purchases. And just just to be clear, so those, um, do we anticipate much of that will be reimbursable by FEMA or we just don't know we yet? We expect most of it will be. Okay, great. But we still have to, you know, we still have to sign the contracts. So, and we have to, and, and it won't be reimbursable if we don't have proper authority. So, so, so the the million dollar limit is is what? It's not the total limit. I mean, it's per it would contract? be that would be per contract. We we just okay. at the time we were talking about this, that was what they were putting as the upper limit of the trash removal contract. Mm -hmm. We can't imagine that there's anything else that we would have immediately that would approach that. Um, but we put that on just because 
we thought we were going to have to sign a million dollar contract for trash removal. For trash removal, yeah. Okay. Anything else? Okay. The resolution has been moved and seconded. Um, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, any opposed? Okay, we've adopted the emergency procurement authorization. Item seven, fee waivers. This is just an informational thing, Bill. This is Mike. Nope. Oh. So, hi, Mike Miller, planning director. So we need to, uh, we don't have to, but it is uh, common. The state has already done this to go through and say during during the floods that we would uh, waive our regular fees for any flood related permits. And so that would be something you guys would have to approve uh, those fee waivers. Uh, I haven't had one here in Montpelier, but when I was at Barry City in 2011, we did that. The state is waiving their fees for building permits. So this would affect building, uh, zoning, and floodplain for any flood related permits. They still have to pay recording fees. So it's there there are still fees, but it's just the recording fees. And that's just a suggestion uh, for you to consider. And a building, building permit includes a uh, permit for demolition, I assume. That comes uh, yeah, it'll be demolition, uh, could be resetting, resetting oil tanks and, and the reconstruction that happens afterwards. Okay. So what you need is a motion to uh, waive those fees. Yes. Okay. Lauren, just ask a question. So, you're you you're not asking for something time limited. You're asking it for like anything. So it's worded like anything tied to the July twenty twenty three flood. We would waive the fee for related um, building permits. Is that so that I, I just like you're not asking for like for a certain time period or a certain whatever. It's just as long as it's kind of tied to this event, then we wanted the request is that we waive the, that particular fee. Right? Yeah, we could put you could put a time limit on it. I mean, as I said, this isn't a requirement. Um, we could still collect fees. It's just common practice to go through and waive fees for these types of disasters. Um, a lot of these businesses are already struggling and to ask them for a two hundred dollar building permit to start reconstruction is is really difficult and 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 it could be something that we could waive hmm. i'm just wondering about uh it, it sort of unlimited that way you know you have people um trying to relate whatever it is they're trying to do to to flood damage it seems like a, a time limit when we at which point we could renew it might be prudent i i don't know what people think but how how is it typically handled in the past it's just a, 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 a an unlimited waiver related to a descriptive like flood damage yeah the way zach, that, yeah, the, <laughs> oh i'm sorry well zach do you have an answer that, or are you do you want to wait and let mike answer that question first I just have another question once we're all done. Okay. So all go right. ahead, Mike. Uh, so the, um, now I lost my train of thought of the. The question was, do people just put on the application, this is flood reconstruction? Yes, yeah, so that's the way it works with the state permit. You have to put in the, uh, put in the description, this is flood related damage that is, um, being requested and then it gets evaluated. I mean, obviously we need to make a, a judgment call as to whether or not this is something that is, somebody was you know, tying flood damage to a future renovation, but it's usually pretty clear what the flood damage is. But um, I agree, Sal, like we could make a, a 30 day or a 60 day and then come back and renew it if we think there are more flood damage projects that may be coming in, but I expect most of them will be in the first 30 days. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I, I'd i be more comfortable with that. I mean, we can always meet again and re renew it if we feel like uh, it hasn't served, you know, its purpose. What do people, what do people think? Uh, there may be a 60 day limit or. 
Do you want to make that your motion, Sal? I have a suggestion. Maybe you could set it to um, what's our first meeting in September, um, whatever the date of that meeting is. So you could mm -hmm. set it, establish that, and then you could have it on the agenda whether it to be renewed or not. I was I want to say the fourteenth, but we can confirm that in a second. Yeah, so we add um, public works permits to that as well. We've got obstruction on the right of way related to flood, as well as dump dump disposal um, fees that we typically would charge for. Mm -hmm. And also bulk water. We've had some mm -hmm. requests for uh, like portable restrooms and water supply to deal with that. So um, just some direction on, on what you would like there. Okay. Yeah, I think those all seem reasonable. Um, and I like the idea of limiting it to be renewed at the next meeting if necessary. So it'd be the September 13 meeting. That basically gives people two months. Uh, and then we can consider at that meeting whether, and then we don't have a gap. We don't have to call a special meeting and all that kind of thing. So yep. yeah, I like, I like that. Yeah. That makes sense. Pell Pellin, you've got your hand Yeah. Um, <laughs> since we will renew it, I don't think it will be a huge problem. But if we create a limit, time then we should be very good at with communication so everybody gets the word so they they know that there is a limit so they can apply and use it i think it is important Donna. Uh, i was thinking that if we made it a broad one for any city permits related to the flood the flood and then letting staff have that discretion between now and our meeting in september Okay. So who's going to make the motion? Is it is it still your motion, Sal? I, I'd be happy to move it if if you can recreate it. Uh, <laughs> I think the motion uh, is to waive all the uh, waive permits for all city services and applications related to flood uh, damage recovery uh, to expire on. Uh, September 13th or September waive. 14th, probably. Waive the fees, right? Not the permits yes. until. Right. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Um, and now we are to other business. And I think this is the time to talk about flood questions. So to the question that Councilmember Bade already posed and many people are posing about both the National Guard and health requirements. Um, it's amazing the, the assistance we get here. Um, we have followed the state's health guidelines. There are PPE available at the, at the hub. Uh, both masks and gloves at, at the volunteer hub. They're being made, people are being asked to wear them. Some are, some aren't. Uh, we are not, you know, going after people that aren't. It's their health, but we are certainly advising people to do so. We've shared the information from the State Department of Health website with Montpelier Alive. They're following it. We've asked, uh, in fact, we have a request into the State Emergency Operations Center for more uh, PPE and hasn't arrived yet. Um, but we're absolutely on top of that. Uh, we, I asked, given the, the sort of number of communications we've had, I actually communicated with the Department of Health this morning asking if they had specific guidance that they wanted to give us and they have not responded yet. Um, they probably, what I am told is from prior emergencies like this, they do not. They say our, our recommendations are on our website and that's that. Um, but if we get specific guidance from them, we will share it. Um, so there's that end. With regard to the National Guard, we did speak with them last week and specifically told them um, that we had issues with radio communication towers that were damaged. They indicated that they would get on that to try to repair those for us. Uh, today, we, so we, we've just start, instituted a meeting today. The mayor was present with um, the people at the hub and city staff just to make sure we're having once a day check in. And um, we believe we could use the National Guard for uh, medical assistance at the, the main tent and for blocking the roads. So we are gonna make, uh, I, I haven't checked with our police people yet, but we believe we're gonna make that request if they think they need the extra help just to keep check in. 
but otherwise we have not seen a huge, uh, I, I don't know what it is that people want us to use the National Guard for, but um, we, are, we are aware of them, we've talked to them, we, we will be asking them to do a couple specific things. Um, when I did check in with City of Barrie and they have not deployed them for anything either. So not that that makes it right, but Lucia. Hi, sorry. Sorry I was late. Um, just a quick intro. My name is Lucia. I uh, grew up in Montpelier. Um, I went to, uh, to school with some, some yeah, uh, some folks, uh, you know, relatives or daughters. And so I, I, um, uh, anyway, what I do now, I work for Columbia University and I provide, uh, I work with um, the National Disa uh, Center for Disaster Preparedness there to give trainings on FEMA programs um, and best practices for planning for recovery. So I just uh, came here like a few days after the flood hit because uh, I live in New York now, but wanted to help. Um, so the that's just like some some background on who I am but the one thing I wanted to say uh in response was we've been to the hub a few times now over the weekend uh to volunteer um I will say uh we didn't notice any sort of um health related guidance coming from them um so like you show up you say hey I'm here to volunteer what should I do and you know the the guidance is is kind of like we uh, like we have these, you know, gloves and the things, you know, you can grab, feel free to grab them um, and just like find, like find a place to be like X, Y, Z are still restaurants or whoever are still um, like doing debris removal right now. Like, you know, you can head to them or something like that. Uh, but there definitely was like zero in the, in the way of like health precaution or training or anything for new people. Um, and I definitely like a positive five, for example, uh, the owner there, he, literally like he's throwing himself into the debris and like he has like an eye infection and had to go to the hospital last mm -hmm. night um so anyway just like as a not to um challenge anything just a little, little bit of like eyes on the ground if that's helpful that is helpful thanks we'll talk to them about being um you know they're being staffed by volunteers too so the word may not be getting around thank you lucia so lucia are you recommending that we should have like a handout for all volunteers to say, here's what is recommended that you do. Yeah, definitely a handout. That that's like such a low stakes, easy thing to do. Um, if you feel like the volunteers could also like have capacity to speak to speak some of those instructions to people when they arrive, just to ensure that that gets through, that would also probably be a good best practice. But at the very least, just a handout. Um, and, you know, and my brother's been volunteering a lot. He knows a lot about that. He's worked in the restaurant industry and like knows a lot about health code and things like that. So I mean, he's he's very willing to come up with that for you guys. Uh, so, or whoever, um, and, you know, triple check. So there's plenty of people I, I'm sure you could delegate that. Great, thanks. Uh, Palin? Um, so we receive emails um, that are like sent to all of us and also we receive individual emails. So one of the individual email I receive, um, a person was talking about she helped cleaning with a mask, but now although she was wearing masks, she cannot breathe well. So maybe I think the demand from public is some of the cleaning needs um, professional um, action. So I think they want this kind of cleaning um, should be done by National Guard, not public. They can have other things, but they don't want to put their health um, on a stake. Everybody wants to help, but then afterwards they have some health issues. So even saying that, oh, if you are doing this, stay and do cleaning, I'm just making up half an hour. Don't stay more than half an hour. Because if a person is having breathing problems, it shows that they stay somewhere, they shouldn't be that long and like inhaling all the dust or whatever. So I think the public is looking for that. It's my understanding. Maybe just one more thing, just to jump off of that. Um, 
I think people are diving in without even asking the question, um, like, because about like what's going on like, to your point. Um, so even having someone who could like go and assess the situation for them, like initial, like do a quick assessment, you're okay to like jump in, um, would be really helpful too. Lauren. Um, thanks. Two questions. One, um, Part of what a number of people have asked about is what role the Red Cross is playing also. So um, it would be helpful to kind of understand how that is playing here and like what role they can or already are playing. Um, and then the other question I had, um, a few folks have been asking about like how are assessments of safety to return to buildings being done. I think there's a lot of concern, especially for renters who don't have any control of, of the process or like wouldn't be engaging directly with, um, you know, knowing that the right questions are being asked just to, so people know like what's, I don't know if there's like a resource or something of like, here's like the checklist of what is being asked and, you know, concerns about long-term, like people are being like, okay, it's like the electricity is safe and whatever. And so you can go back, but really there's going to be huge like mold issues or something and like how, how we're kind of trying to get ahead of that. So I don't know if anyone here can speak to that yet or just raising it and we can kind of continue that conversation. So I can answer both those questions. The Red Cross is providing the shelter at Barry. It's still open. It's still providing, uh, I talked with uh, their representative a couple of days ago, and it's, this is just good information in general. When, if any of you get asked, you know, why doesn't the city have its own shelter? Uh, they provide, you know, mental health services, medical services, beds, cots, food, pet care, uh, you know, assistance in finding other locations. They're, you know, fully stuffed. It, it, so just throwing up an open building saying, here's a place for you to go, that might be great for an hour or two, but but without those sort of ability to do that. That really is all they're doing. We did hear that there were some people going around saying they were from the Red Cross. I think I'd urge people to be leery of that. The Red Cross is providing that shelter and staffing it still and will continue to do so for the time being. Uh, to your second question, um, both the state and city uh, building inspectors are going around building to building and certifying whether they can be reopened. So they are looking at electrical, they're looking at mold, they're looking at building stability uh, and um, basically giving people the all clear to either go back in or turn their power back on or those kinds of things. So uh, that is happening. I just talked with two of them on the street today. Uh, so they're still out doing that. Um, um, Carrie. Uh, Carrie, you were up first. Yeah, although if Sal has a follow-up to that, he could, he could go ahead. Well, that's, I just had a question it. about that. Um, okay. When they certify the building, do they post it somehow? Or, uh, I mean, if they make a note on their clipboard, great, but how do people know that the building has been cleared to re-enter? I don't know exactly. I think they basically give them some sort of permit or okay. I mean, um, I, we'll find out, we'll get back to you on that. So we have the right answer. We'll check on that. Carrie. So, uh, so two questions. Um, one is just a little bit more about the National Guard and about what they can do. Palin brought up the question about cleaning. Is that is that something that they can do? So if there is, you know, if they're capable of coming in and shoveling out people's basements and pulling trash out and doing things like that, it would we could use all the help we could get on that, right? So, um, so that's a that's a question. The other the other question I have is about people who have been displaced and can't go back to their homes, and particularly renters who are not necessarily sure when they can go back, but they're, they literally can't go back to their homes until something is done. And is there, what resources are there? Is there anything that we can do to be helpful? Is there, um, are there, you know, is there housing that we can find? Um, Connor, Casey has been suggesting that maybe we could talk to VCFA and see if some of that dorm space up there could be used temporarily. And um, so I just wondered what we might be able to offer along those lines. So that is a difficult question. Um, you know, in the short term, that is what the Red Cross shelter is for. Um, we we have had some conversations with VCFA. Uh, you know, I saw what Connor sent out and we really appreciated his leadership on that. I, I'm not sure we, the city right now, have the wherewithal to to provide those services we need to partner with a downstreet or somebody like that. And of course they're out straight. Um, we're only aware of one major building that did have to displace people. Uh, and it was a building that uh, was owned by downstreet. And we understood they found housing for all, but maybe one person. 
who uh, had some challenges with being housed. And I was actually told today that they've got the at least certification to go back in. They've, I mean, they know what they need to do. They can't reopen, but they've already got electricians there. They, they, they're expecting to be reopened shortly. Um, you know, I, I, we will have to find out those, those are external housing resources um, for us. And again, VCFA is a great idea. Uh, we're just going to figure out who would, who would run that. I can tell you, I, I talked to uh, Angie Harbin, the director of uh, Down Street just last week, and she confirmed that uh, the people that had to be removed from uh, the Elm Street apartments, she has been able to find places for them to stay, not necessarily convenient or local because they were just looking every, everywhere, but that they have been able to find uh, play apartments for those people to be. Um, Lucia? Um, so, sorry, my, I think my internet is like slow. Um, hope everyone can hear me, but uh, so, yeah. so there's a few things. My head is like exploding with answers to this because this is one of our trainings. Um, so basically, I, I guess I would suggest, this is actually what I was hoping to get out of this meeting a little bit too, is to um, understand how much coordination has happened between the state and federal levels for Montpelier, um, because there are a bunch of uh, especially housing assistance programs that FEMA will uh, reimburse for, um, or FEMA provide, we just got approval through the disaster declaration through for individual assistance, which can be direct assistance from FEMA to individuals. So yeah, so I don't know how much people know about this, but the disaster declaration happens, you get basically either public assistance and or individual assistance under those two headings. There are like a bunch of different kinds of things. Um, so we got public assistance immediately. That means that that assistance comes through the state and local governments, like, and, and nobody can access that directly unless they're going through the state and local governments. And what that means is you provide that assistance like upfront and then you get reimbursed for it. And as long as it's under like the eligible criteria, you will get reimbursed for it up to 75%, but you have to be in coordination with the state who's really running that. Um, so that's one thing. And then under that public assistance umbrella, there's lots of stuff you can do for people. Um, but I also would say that there's direct assistance from FEMA now that's available for individuals. Um, and so that can be things like TSA, is a really common assistance program, the temporary shelter assistance program. Um, and basically uh, individuals and as well um, governments can be reimbursed for like hotel stays. That was something that has happened in prior disasters in Vermont, as well as things like the multifamily lease and repair program, which is an agreement between like, like say an apartment building um, or complex that is vacant or like not being used. And you can basically allow people to stay there for free under under this program that's again reimbursed so that like it's basically reimbursed the cost of assist of um sorry of rent and that's sort of calculated in a certain complicated way but the point is there are all these different types of programs which are available that could kind of guide what what you guys might pursue uh, because then it could be reimbursable but i think the bottom line is that coordination really needs to happen with the state on that because the money's coming through the state, at least public assistance is. As far as individual assistance, I can actually drop in the chat this resource that I've already put together, which like pulls not only like what I know to be true about this disaster declaration and what's available, but also some of the other things like GoFundMes and like the random things that have popped up for like businesses or homeowners. Um, I actually made like a Google Doc, so if you got which can be up, which I'll be updating, so you guys can like I'll drop it in the chat, but that's like a resource you can look at like immediately um, that explains in layman's terms like what like how this works. Um, it is available. I made it with business owners and individuals in mind, so it isn't it isn't as technical as it probably should be for you guys as as city government, but it's a good start as like a snapshot of what's happening, what's available. Lucia, thank you. That's super helpful. I, I don't know if you got my message. Are you available at two this afternoon? Yeah, great. I can come. I yeah, that would be great here. because that's our, I mean, I, I know that I'm glad the council is hearing that these resources are available, but that's the team that will really be putting together these resources. So if you could join us, that would be and walk us through what we need to do and what, what the potential is. Because I think for many of us, we've been just in clean out mode and, and, uh, 
you know, trying to understand what the possibilities are. So this is very helpful. So look forward to seeing yeah, you. Yeah, I, I will learn just as much probably from you guys as you would from me because I you know what the state of things are and definitely respect that like there's a way there are people handling this and like not coming in out of you know oh, I get you. what to do yeah, but yeah. just to help. Yeah, thank you so much for reaching out to us. So I would like to circle back to two other questions that were raised. One was um, on the public health questions that people have uh, approached us with. One of the things that a number of people have asked is whether there's been any kind of analysis of the uh, content of the, uh, of the silt or flood residue and, uh, and its potential health impacts. Not that I'm aware of. Is that something that the State Department of Health would uh, be on? Uh, perhaps we haven't heard anything from the State Department of Health, to be honest with you, since this began. We've heard from, you know, the, their EOC, Emergency Operations Center, and BGS and a couple other departments, but not from Department of Health. There's been no outreach from them. Okay. I, as I said, I reached out to them today to ask if they had any recommendations or guidance, so we'll see if they respond. And so could we, could, could somebody take a sample of some of that stuff so we could ask the city, ask the state if we could get it analyzed? I don't know. I don't know if it makes that much of a difference because I assume that the recommendations for how, how to go into the buildings and, and do work would be the same no matter what is in the stuff. But. Yeah, we can talk to them about that. And then the other question again is Carrie's question. Uh, what about asking this uh, National Guard to come in and do the digging out and moving stuff? Yeah, yeah, we can see easily add that to the list. We we we're like I said, we'll probably be calling them this afternoon to to line up specific assistance. We're happy to add that to the list. Great. Council, is there anything else that we should talk about uh, of Palin? Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, Bill, is it okay if we receive email asking National Guard coming and cleaning? Can you say that city already we'll, contacted them? We will, we, yes. Okay. Yeah, Perfect. we'll, we'll, we're gonna, we'll put out, you know, when one of our regular public updates, we will put out okay. this information about the National Guard and Department of Health and everything that we know, um, okay. you know, what we know. Which yeah, great. Up, but, uh, yeah, and the second thing, when I go to a city uh, website, you did a great job. Like top of it, it's like disaster recovery assistance and other links that people go and get information. Is it possible if it doesn't create too much work for city staff uh, at like frequently asked questions, like all the things we are talking now, and you know. I'm sure I did. I'm sure other city councils did the same to just forward emails to you. So maybe we can have some kind of document and when people ask us, we can also, okay, this is the link. You can go and check, but that's the answer of your question. Is it, is it possible? Yeah, that should be, we should be able to do that. Okay, yeah, thank you. Great. Uh, Donna? Along those same lines, Bill, I was expecting the staff to come back with a response to those emails about the guard. Would you be planning one? Yeah, we're going to, we will put that out in a public, I mean, yeah, we'll, we'll respond in a public way about what we are doing. I think some of them were, we'll, we'll, we'll when, once well, we, I think we, some of them once we have a plan for what we're, yes, but they would all you be know, we're, we're getting a lot of suggestions from people in a lot of different ways. And they're, you know, we appreciate people's participation and some, you know, some have more usefulness than others and so we're trying to wade through those and figure out ways to respond in a public way that about what we are doing well maybe you can tell me I mean, one of my responses was when people were saying we should have had the guard out there on monday how much you can't just put people out on the street there was a lot of decision making and process that had to occur yeah and so they were trying yeah. to get the car I'm not really planning, to be honest with you, to respond to what we should have done that, of time that's right. gone by. 
Um, you know, I, I think everybody made decisions based on what was in front of them at the time and we did the best we could. Um, I probably would just respond to here's what we're doing going forward. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. And regardless of National Guard coming or not, all these emails and questions show us uh, that there's a concern about health issues and yeah. people who volunteer, they are now having health issues like infection, in something. So we should do something about it, I agree. right? Because it's a, it's a huge concern. It's coming from all over the corners to us. So. Sal, were you raising your um, hand? Yeah, yeah. One, one final health que uh, question. I got a, a question about uh, boil water orders. I mean, it was somebody who was saying, you know, we need more information when we get a boil water order, and we need to know what to do after it's been lifted. Should we flush the pipes? Yada yada. And I looked for information. I couldn't find any on our side. I found some, uh, like at the Health Department of New York. Do we have anything on our site? And if not, I, I'm happy to put it together. I think it's some, it's an easy enough thing to do, but you folks all have other things to do. I'd be happy to take it on, but I don't want to redo it if it's already there, but I just couldn't find it. Um, I defer to DPW whether it's already there. I can tell you that boil water notices are put into place. Um, and again, Kirk can give you the more detail, but when typically if there's a water main break and there's a chance that it could be what they call reverse pressure. So something contaminated could get into the water supply. And it's usually in the, the area around the break um, so mm -hmm. that people will boil their water uh, to, and once it's fixed and flushed, and then what we typically do is after the boil water notice was, or, or while that's happening, we test the water. And if there's no contaminants found in the water, then we say, you know, it, it's it's always a precautionary act. It's not because there is evidence of a problem. It's a, to prevent a problem. Exactly. And so there's nothing yeah. anybody needs to do once it's taken off if if it's everything's tested fine. And they and they don't know that. Is the right. Thing. So we, right. I, I would I'd be happy to create a document that spells that out for people so that when we get a boiled notice, we can sure. include that information. And if so, if that's an already. If we don't already have that, I will put that together and then submit it and people can hey, look at Kurt, it. Kurt, do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, we don't have a specific document to that. Um, you know, when we dish you boil water notices, it has language in there about, you know, flushing. Um, yeah. Let the water run until it's clear, approximately five minutes that we put on uh, when we deliver notices in, uh, door to door. Um, so I'm happy to provide that to you, Sal, or I can have. Okay, to, yeah. Why don't you go ready. ahead and I'll use that as a starting point and then I'll, I'll send you whatever I find elsewhere, and we can decide what the final version is. Um, One more thanks. thing I want to add about this particular boil water notice is that there were no incidents in the city that would have normally caused the need for a boil water notice. Um, we had no, you know, the breaks, we didn't have reverse yeah. pressure, we didn't have any of that. The state asked us to do it as a precaution. And then they asked us to do additional testing beyond what is normally, so it took extra time. Um, so, I, you know, I think people got confused that this flood had contaminated our water system and th exactly. that was when the in case. Fact, yeah, when, when in fact, fact the water was fine the whole time. Yeah, the whole time. exactly. Yeah, okay. Good. People would be happy to know that, you know, so, yeah. Uh, Donna. Well, I have a bit of concern of you and Kelly and others being in the building if indeed it has all that damp and mold around, uh, you are taking precautions. Yeah, we're trying. Yes. <laughs> Maybe you should go somewhere else. Well, we're talking about it. Uh, so so the, the front of the building, the manager suite, the, um, the this clerk suite really didn't get hit at all. There is kind of, you know, the air is rough. We've got air cleaners and dehumidifiers in here and all that. We opened the windows for a while and I think it, that made it worse because stuff blowing in from the outside. Um, but it's, it's you know, it's not bad. The, from kind of the rest of the way back is, is pretty much closed. Uh, so as we mentioned, everybody's moving to the senior center. 
So our goal is to get the people that absolutely have to move moved um, because that's a big undertaking. You know, National Life is donating a lot of office equipment and those kind of things. We've got to get phones, internet, you know, copiers, all that kind of stuff um, set up and then take stock of whether we then should move uh, ourselves. Uh, but because we're at least functional, we don't have anything that's disruptive. We don't have wrecked files. We don't have any of that stuff. Um, and, you know, we're, we're hanging in here for now. You know, of course, we're in the middle of a reappraisal and grievance hearings, uh, which has been interesting. And, and, you know, the assessor's office are in here. So disrupting them right now would be difficult. So anyway, we, we, we hear you and we're concerned about it. And uh, there may be a phase two of a move, but we're trying to get phase one done with, with the minimum of disruption and then take it from there. So. Okay, council members, is there anything else we need to talk to about this item? Done. I guess I could say this in my council report, but I really encourage people. I went online and found several places where I could buy gift cards, other places where I could make donations, that every little bit helps that if we as council members, as well as residents who are out of the flood, immediate flood zone, if we could go and support our local businesses with those kinds of financial support, however small, it really matters. So please support the local businesses with their comeback. Thank you. Okay, uh, Lauren. Yeah, I'm just wondering about um, if there's value, like. I almost hate to suggest it because I know city staff is so busy, but like Thursday evening, like a one hour community Zoom conversation, like just like a to come ask your questions and make sure people are getting like the right links to the right resources, like something because because we are getting so many questions and so many people have so many different issues they're dealing with. Um, so something that wouldn't take a lot of prep, obviously, would be the time to show up. But like the things that you know in your head to be able to answer the questions. Um, I don't know. That's what a good idea. We will, we will take a look at that. That is a good idea. You know, um, so just, uh, you know, you've heard me say this. So we've got, um, first of all, you know, we're not, we're, our staff has been fabulous and we're not working any harder than the people that are trying to put their businesses back together. I mean, everyone's, everyone's got their, their uh, burden that they're carrying right now. We are, you know, we do have kind of a double-edged operation going. One is trying to do the, all the community support that we're talking about in, deal with the cleanup and all that sort of thing, as well as put back our own, you know, we, we don't have an HR department or a finance department or a planning department or, a, you know, right now. So we're trying to get our own bits back together. Um, fortunately, police, fire, public works are fully functional now. Um, so, so I think people need to remember that we, we are also not, um, not at full, full capacity right now ourselves. So we are we are also a business that's recovering <laughs> and uh, trying to get ourselves back okay. together. We're not as you know we'll, we will be able to do it, but um, yeah. So that's where we're at. Okay, let's move to uh, council reports. Donna, do you have anything to add to what you already said? No, other than just so grateful for everyone pitching in and helping and, and just being so positive. Thank you. Hey, okay, Carrie. Yeah. Um, Thanks everybody. And uh, just I just finished right before this meeting, uh, meeting with FEMA. They're going door to door. They came by our house and um, I went through the whole registration process and everything. Got a lot of my questions answered. I got a lot of good information. Uh, it's a it's a process. It's a bureaucratic process, as I'm sure everybody here knows. But I um, I think we need to do whatever we can to get the word out to people and encourage them that. There's multiple steps to it. And, you know, for instance, I was warned, you're probably going to get a response that says FEMA is not going to offer you assistance uh, until you provide this information from your insurance company or something. There's multiple steps that have to be followed. And um, so I, I love the idea of, of a kind of a public meeting. I hate to put any more work on staff. I wonder if that is something that city council can kind of, you know, take the lead on and make happen. I don't want to, you know, tell our mayor what to do, but it could be a great opportunity for the mayor to say, I'm calling this public meeting and just have people to be able to ask questions. And um, and in general, any anything that Evelyn may be able to do to think about how to get information out to people beyond 
the standard internet based ways. Um, uh, you know, the, I'm not sure what those are, but I, I'd be happy to, to brainstorm with her about how to get more information out to people in my district who are currently affected um, and, and to keep that going, you know, because there will be lots of ongoing questions. This is going to be a long, long process. Uh, and I just, I, I just want to reiterate my thanks to the community and to all the volunteers and um, our house is just in a, a, such a different place than it was a week ago. It happened really quickly. Um, you know, the, the immediate, now we're drying out and we're, I'm waiting for the electrician right now and all that kind of stuff. And I know that lots of other people are going through all that and don't necessarily uh, probably have a lot of questions that are going to continue to need to be answered timely so that they don't miss opportunities for assistance. Yeah, thank you for that, Carrie. And I'm glad yeah. to hear things are, are moving on. Um, so with regard to a couple of things there that I wanted to respond to, one is um, we are sending out not, I wouldn't say everything, but a lot of what we're sending out, we also do is press releases. So they are going out to radio and the Good. news media. I mean, I, you know, I don't know, you know, I mean, you can always, you know, we can always do more, I would imagine, but we're trying to get out to as many people as we can. Um, second of all, I think a forum is great. One of the things that we've been trying to be really cautious about is not to get bad information. So we, we've really been reluctant to speak for FEMA about what they will or won't do or how that will work. So I think I'd be more inclined to do that if we can get a FEMA person that maybe would participate, uh, just like, you know, whenever, like electrical inspectors. We're trying to make sure that the people who are in position to answer questions can answer them. And I know, you know, people have been asking us all the same questions. What's FEMA going to do about this? And the answer is we don't know. We might have, we might guess, we might have an idea but we'd rather have it come from a, a credible source and the same thing, like just same thing with public health, like get it, hear what everyone's concerns are. Let's ask the department of public health, you know, the state health department for what they say, just the, the dams. Let's ask Vermont dam safety for their analysis, because there is a lot of second guessing, a lot of expertise. So we'd rather get it directly from the source rather than give somebody something bad. So. So. Um, I, I really, I just wanted to get to, uh, thank everybody for the job you're doing. I, I and I, I hope you, uh, understand that the kind of questions we're getting from the public, I think they're, they're normal. You know, there's information people need. It's, and our bringing them to you is not a criticism in any way, really. You, you're doing a great job. Um, you know, we can always, we can always do more, but, um, we can't do it. We can't do everything for everybody. So thanks for what you've been doing. And if there's, you know, I'm I'm really um, mucking out basements is not something I can I can really do, but I can I can do other if there's other ways I can help, like with this boil water thing. Happy to do the research, but if there are even more important things where I can help, uh, feel free to feel free to give me a call. Thanks. Thanks. Um, continuing around the horseshoe, uh, Palin. Yeah, I will echo. <laughs> The thanks and gratitude. Thank you, everything you are doing. I wish I could be more helpful. Um, but um, even like forwarding emails of like public, it feels me like I am doing something. So, but like Sal said, please let us know if you need more from us, from me. Uh, I can talk for myself. And another thing I was thinking it's a natural disaster. We don't have any power or capacity to stop it or to avoid from it. But maybe since it happened twice uh, before, maybe we, this time we could prepare something, some guidelines for afterwards. So instead of people, oh, what, what are we doing? Like, oh, the volunteers sign up here. Sign. No, this is the first thing we will do this. Second, we will do this. Unfortunately, we became experienced. So we can prepare something like that. I hope it doesn't happen again. Uh, but if we have some kind of very short document, it shows that next people, if it happens, I hope it doesn't, then they, they will know what they will do and it will be quicker and public will be maybe more um, 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 relaxed and comfortable and they will feel that they are uh, being um, taken care of 
uh, faster. So thank you. Yeah, again. thank you for that. I, I, we will be doing, you know, a debrief after all of this is uh, not only, you know, from the city, like, right from what did we do right or wrong as the things were unfolding and all that, but also how best to work with the community. And obviously uh, we're not the only community in the country that this happens to. So there's a lot of uh, national and we have been consulting a lot of, you know, best practice. That's really how Montpelier Alive was able to so quickly, uh, you know, they had an experienced volunteer who was able to tap on systems that already work about how to match volunteers and, and needs. And, the, the same thing, you know, how to set up your emergency operations center. So there's a lot of good info, but we can still always learn what went right and what went wrong here. It's interesting. Um, I just tell this as an anecdote. The, the city manager who was here in 92, Ryan Cotton, maybe one of you on here, screen, two of you may have known Ryan, um, reached out to me. He was here for the 92 flood. He reached out to me and offered his, you know, support but uh and he he's had some words of advice and one of them he said was the best thing they did was a daily update for you know they had put out a daily update and i wrote back to him, ryan if we only put it out daily we'd be we'd be drawn and quartered as like, we're we're on like every two hours now you know so it's times change so you know who knows maybe by you know when the next one happens everyone's you know I, who knows what the technology will be so i think yes we can learn and also times you know the demands and expectations of people are just far different every time around too so um but yeah we've had we've had a little practice at this and like i said waterbury the town manager from waterbury from irene called me this morning with some suggestions so uh there's a network out there for sure yeah thanks yeah. we will definitely yeah. do that. Yeah, sure. No, I wasn't saying city for city. I was saying for public. Everybody, right? all of us, yeah. but city too, for you know. The, what we, they have to do yeah. afterwards, right? Well, I think, because, I also think yeah, there's going to be a lot of looking at what, you know, like I think we mentioned even in this building, like do we, do we, I, I'm not sure we should put offices back downstairs, you know, maybe those become the meeting rooms and, and the offices move upstairs so that, I mean, if we have a flood, we lose a meeting room and not files and, you know, all those kinds of things. And, you know, I think we're going to have to make decisions or people are going to have to make decisions about their buildings. Um, you know, uh, you know, we've, how many times has this happened? And we've still had folks storing merchandise in basements because there's no other place to put them. And so at some point, you know, we're going to conclude that that's not a good idea. So, um, you know, I think there's a lot to be considered to make us more uh, resilient in the future. Lauren. Yeah, thanks for all this. Um, I th just a couple quick things. I mean, one, just echoing the gratitude um, for everyone in the community. It's really inspiring and amazing. Um, on the community forum, I, I totally hear what you're saying, Bill, about wanting the right experts. I mean, I would love to still organize something and be like, part of it might just be gathering questions and being like, we want to, you know, we're working to get FEMA here, like an official to do another community conversation. We're working to get the Department of Health. If we can't line people up, I just feel like even collecting those now would be helpful to understand what are the real issues um, and not trying to answer them with half information, but just being like really clear at the outset, how we frame it up. Like some of this is just understanding so we can get the right experts to answer the right questions that you all need. Um, and I'm happy to um, help organize this if that's useful. Um, just let me know. I'm happy to think through a quick agenda and, and whatever else is useful. Um, so I don't know if, Jack, you want to work on that? I can work. How do we make this yeah. as light on uh, city staff as possible? No, Lauren, I, I didn't mean to imply that we didn't want to do it either. I, I think it is a great idea. I just I just was trying to say that we, we want to be careful what yeah. we can and can't answer. Yeah, no, I totally agree with what you were saying. Um, uh, and then, you know, obviously we'll have a city council meeting and you know, we have no opportunity, but it just feels like timely opportunities would be. Um, so yeah, just let me know if I can be helpful in organizing. Um, and my only other um, thought, I know there's been some conversation online with like, the energy committee who are like, how can we help? Like, so I'm just thinking about all of our city volunteer committees who might also be resources and have kind of different areas of expertise. And so, um, you know, and I'm happy to try to do some thinking with if any other counselors are interested or something like take that project off the, the city staff as like an initial thinking um, exercise. But again, you know, with like 
various types of paperwork or experts or whatever that different groups might have, like through that broader volunteer network um, that people have kind of self-selected to areas of expertise and interest. Um, so just just putting the idea out there that um, we might want to think about how, because that group already was like, how do we reorient? We had a whole strategic planning process a few weeks ago, but now the world is different. And how do we like make the most impact for our community in this moment? So I bet other committees are feeling the same way. Um, so anyway, just throwing that out there for cons future consideration. Cool. Thanks. Um, mayor's report. Uh, I echo what people have said. Uh, city staff, top to bottom, have been just incredible. Working so much and so effectively, I, uh, I there's, couldn't say enough great about uh, everything they're doing. Um, and I think we're, this really shows that uh, that we're getting our money's worth in the in the people that we're employing and the and the services we're paying for. I think it's uh, it's great. Um, I can also report that this morning we had a press a conference to kick off the Mont Montpelier Strong Recovery Fund. It's a joint effort of the Montpelier Montpelier Community Foundation and the Vermont. Community Fund, is that right, Bill? Montpelier Foundation and Montpelier Live, and then the Vermont Community Fund made a contribution to it. And uh, what it, the recovery is going to take a lot of money, and a lot of it is not going to be forthcoming from FEMA or any other free source. And so this is a big fundraising effort, and it just started and already we have uh, commitments for something like $280,000 and uh, which I think is, uh, is really pretty impressive. Uh, there were a lot of, a lot of coverage at the press conference and hopefully we'll get out on the TV and on the news and that will start some money coming in. Um, and I think that's pretty much all I have. Anything on city manager's, manager's report that you haven't already covered, Bill? Um, well, you skipped city clerk. Yeah, uh, city I, clerk. I have nothing except to say that I'm hoping to have things in one form or another up and running by Thursday. Clerk's one. Um, so actually, I, we didn't rehearse this. So Kelly, could you could you give an update on where we are with the office move, just so people know? Yes, um, actually, as we've been in this meeting, I've been getting um, contact from National Life. So they've donated a bunch of desks and um, uh, filing cabinets and things, and their team is on their way right now. Um, so I'm coordinating volunteers to get over there. We were able to move some of our office equipment over. Um, and so what we'll be doing is then once we can get the desk set up, we'll be assigning them um, to the departments that were most impacted. And then we'll take it from there. We'll do two locations, one at um, the senior center um, and the other one will be at the DPW garage and they're upstairs, a conference space. Um, and so we're working on getting people fully operational in those spaces. We've been focused primarily on city owned properties so that then you know, we can, if, if this thing um, takes a while, which uh, it's going to take a while, um, then we're in a good spot. Um, so we hopefully will be up and running soon. Um, we're really focused on making sure that we can get um, finance and planning up and running um, for permits, but then also um, to be able to get people paid and to pay our bills. Um, so we are focused on core operations as well, um, just to make sure that we can uh, offer some continuity in this uh, situation and we'll keep going. Thanks, um, thanks Kelly. Just some of our other challenges uh, are the, the generator that funk, that uh, serves both fire department and this building has wrecked. Um, so we've, we're trying to make decisions between rehabbing that or buying a new one. And uh, we found out the new one was something like 40 weeks out. So we think we're gonna rehab the one we have. And um, in the meantime, the fire station has a generator, so they are covered. This building now is not, but that's okay because we have such limited usage in, in here. Um, so that's okay. all right. Police is covered. Uh, so yeah, those are the kind of things. The elevator, of course, is out. Um, 
our, we, uh, I think I mentioned that we've done a huge amount of file uh, saving and restoration and sorting. We had the state archives folks here going through, giving us guidance as to what was most important to try to save. And there is some process where you freeze these things and clean them and I don't know, we're doing it. They're all in boxes. We're spending a lot of money for it. Um, yeah, so people, we're, we're just doing all that. We are, we now have a daily connect with Montpelier Alive. We're going to have a daily connect with our team, uh, the mayor, Jordan, he mentioned the fundraising. I just want to, you know, I know I've told you, but since it's public, I just want to also acknowledge that uh, Walmart uh, gave us a very huge donation of supplies. They just said, what do you need? We gave them a long list and they showed up with all of it. Uh, Amazon is delivering a whole bunch of things that was asked for uh, and uh, also acknowledge the city center space and the state. Uh, they're allowing us to use space in that building to store some of these. Um, the, the Walmart deliveries are at the rec center, as are the uh, Churches of Christ a Disaster Fund from out of Nashville. They showed up with a couple of tractor trailers full of supplies. Those are all stored in the uh, uh, in the rec center as well. And they are, you know, reaching out to, I think really individuals in need. So three great sources of donations, National Life, of course, with their, their thing. So uh, not to, and of course, the huge amounts of <coughs> people that you're seeing downtown. And uh, so thanks, just thanks to everybody. And we're rolling along and we'll try to keep you as updated as we can, as we think of things to tell you. So uh, with regard to, uh, you know, some of the comments you made, yes, please keep sending comments from people we understand that you're not necessarily you're just passing them along and you know people offering their uh, opinions is part of the deal that's what we all sign up for and we sort through them and you know we we, we learn something from all of them and uh try to make the best of it so and yeah, so we will proceed from there okay great i think we are set and i think we can adjourn at 108 p.m <laughs>